Kenya lists green bond on the London Stock Exchange today as the UK-Africa Investment Summit kicks off. Mali's new mining code sets stability period at 20 years. And South Africa misses deadline to bail out its national carrier. Thank you for joining us and welcome to Business Incorporated. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. We get the show started with the markets and it's looking like a dull start to the week at the major African markets we track. Beginning from here in Nigeria where the all share index had lost 0.16% as that intraday. The South African bourse was also down 0.06% at about midday Nigerian time. In Egypt, the index was 0.59% lower at intraday. In Kenya, the market ended Friday's session down 0.10%. In the Middle East, the numbers were mixed at intraday with the Abu Dhabi index posting the strongest gain of 0.76%. Dubai's index appears to have snapped out of the seven-day winning streak, declining 0.42% at intraday. The Qatari index was also down 0.22%. Saudi Arabia's index was up 0.11%. And European markets traded slightly lower in the morning as policymakers and business leaders gather in Davos, Switzerland for the annual World Economic Forum Conference. Climate change and sustainable business will be a key focus for delegates at this year's WEF summit, but other political risks such as international trade and geopolitical instability are also likely to be on the agenda. Back in Europe, finance ministers from EU member states will gather in Brussels on Monday for the monthly Eurogroup meeting. And um, Prosbet at Plus Shares com com climbed 3.2% in early deals after Citigroup upgraded the German mass media company stock, while Kurgen gained 3.5%. At the other end of the European benchmark, NMC Health's London listed share dropped 4.3%, while Air France KLM slid 2.7%. Well, the chairman of the Honeywell Group, Obao Tudeko, says the UK-Africa summit is beneficial to both UK and the African continent, particularly as the UK seeks to leave the EU. Obao Tudeko, who was speaking on the sideline of the UK-Africa summit, noted that the British government is beginning to take Africa seriously and it's time for Africa to connect in order to reap the benefits the new relations present. Quite an opportunity. Uh, to be part of bilateral trade and economic development between governments of Africa and the British government. There is so much that is happening, and one thing that is clear is that global cooperation on the economic front actually translates to gross national development of various economies. I think post-Brexit, the British government needs more emphasis on Africa. And considering what one has seen by way of the organization behind what we are witnessing here now, clearly Britain takes Africa very seriously. And Africa also needs Britain. Africa needs to connect much more so to emphasize the development agenda that is also inclusive, inclusive of gender, you know, the feminine participation. And I can see a lot of women in this uh, organization that we have seen. Apart from that, FinTech and technology, these are areas of attention. Africa needs to export a lot of its produce in order that they can use the process and resources for us to continuously increase and fortify our infrastructural development. Clearly, development is a function of continuously looking at the various factors of production. But well, everything on development is based on engagement, relationship, and mutual cooperation. I can see a diversification of various countries, and I see the increasing partnership and inclusion of Britain 
and African countries as, as something that is wonderful. Well, still on the UK-Africa Investment Summit, my colleague Juliana, of course, is covering that event and joins us now to give us some updates there. Hello, Juliana. Good afternoon. I know it's a busy day for you out there. Well, the UK government says it has signed 11 trade agreements with African countries just over a week before it officially leaves the European Union, and it's expected to unveil a new strategy for development in Africa today at that summit. So what areas... Uh, does the UK intend to focus on in Africa in terms of investment? Good afternoon, Chimese. Well, as you can imagine, the fact that there are 20 African heads of states here, there are different uh, trade deals for each and every individual country. I suppose here, um, in terms of the British media and the British press, what they appear to be focusing on is the fact that uh, Boris Johnson and the British government will no longer be investing in coal. So any investment that had gone into coal will no longer be there. And they're trying to develop um, Africa and Nigeria in particular sustainable infrastructure, energy. So that's first of all, climate change appears to be at the top of the agenda. Also as well, infrastructure in terms of roads. We know that uh, the Auckland State and the Lagos State Government are here. Later this week, they will be going alongside the uh, from uh, the Prime Minister's office to take them to some, some areas of interest that they believe um, they can use and take back to Nigeria um, and it will develop the infrastructure uh, there. So there, there are several um, different things and hopefully by the end of the day once I've managed to track um, delegates down and take all the details I'll have more information for you. But the headlines here is sustainable development and infrastructure appear to be the big ones. Well, you did mention that uh, about 20 African heads of states are in attendance, of course, including Nigerian president, and they are expected to sign one bilateral agreement or the other. Which head of state has clinched a deal as we speak? Well, the plenary sessions are ongoing at the moment. I know that we have, have the head of the African Development Bank uh, sitting on stage with the uh, president of Kenya, uh, Uru Kenyatta, as well as the Ghanaian president. Also, we know behind the scenes, President Mohamedou Buhari will be speaking with the World Bank. Um, he'll also be speaking with members of the royal family. So there are, there, there are bits and pieces going on. I must say, to give you a feel of this kind of event, it's very much like a United Nations event. So there's lots of pomp and ceremony. Not a lot of the deals will be done today. Today, really, is a, is a way to show the media uh, that Britain really is the number one destination when it comes to investment for African countries countries, but behind the scenes later on this evening, during the week is when the big deals will be done. So I would say today is more of a showcase. Hmm. Now, one would ask, who really needs this summit? And is it making headlines in the British press today? Oh, it's absolutely making headlines. The UK African Investment Summit is definitely right there at the top. And it's obvious Britain needs Africa. They will be leaving uh, the European Union on the 31st of January. Boris Johnson has put it into law that he will not be extending the transition period beyond December the 31st. So that leaves 11 months to try and uh, forge a new trade relationship with their biggest trading partner. If that is impossible and if there will be a no deal, of course, Britain can rely on their Commonwealth. So, um, and Boris Johnson was making no, uh, he wasn't trying to hide that idea. He understands that he's facing stiff opposition, not only from but also now from Russia and America, interested in forging new partners. So it definitely seems to be as if Africa, you know, have the biggest uh, stake at the table here. It just needs to be that they make sure they sign the right deals and they put Africa first. And of course, the fact that it can trickle down to every African who needs it. All right. Thank you very much for those um, updates, Juliana. Continue to monitor this. Thank you for your time.